this from this event. Now we have um, your herd. So, <laughs> uh, you can scan this now to the exact one. We also have a tiny URL. So hopefully Android slash October 25th is a little easier to type in. <laughs> so you have options galore. And the number of the day today is three. Um, because the midterm feedback forms were three points on the time. So I think everybody should be Alright, um, we're going to move on. Anybody still need a second to fill out the feedback form? Cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be talking about fragments and networking. Uh, the networking introduction is going to be um, sort of soft not a very in-depth one because we're going to explore it next week as well, but we want to spread it out over two weeks since it's a very important and pretty complicated topic. Um, so some announcements is, um, uh, first thing is if there's ever any issues with office hours, like um, the Zoom link isn't working or like uh, something like that, no one's at the place that you're at, uh, just make a campus wire post and we'll get it fixed. Um, usually it's just uh, uh, something has gone wrong on our end or something like that. We'll be in the wrong meeting room, uh, something like that. Uh, the midterm feedback form was due. Thank you, everyone who submitted. Uh, and uh, for like transparency, we're going to go over uh, some of the feedback you all have submitted, and um, uh, at least representing like seventy percent. Some of you submitted kind of late, and you didn't include it in the lecture. <laughs> um, the uh, hack challenge is happening very soon, so. Next week is going to be the sixth lecture, which is the final like official lecture. And then the week after is going to be at the exact same time the Hatch Challenge kickoff in this room. So instead of the seventh lecture, you're going to come here to do the Hatch Challenge kickoff. And for all devs, it's required. So anyone taking the Android course, iOS course, we're all going to be here. Um, and I believe we're looking at making it groups of five, four to five people. Um, it's going to be optional one designer, two people on back end, and um, two to three people on the front end. And front end is either exclusively iOS or exclusively Android. So you might be working with fellow Android peers, um, one or two of them. Uh, so, and start thinking of ideas um, of apps that you want to make, uh, ideas that are, you know, like feasible, and be like, I'm going to make Google 2.0, like, <laughs> you know, something that you could realistically make in like the course of a week or so. Um, and using uh, knowledge that he's uh, used so far. The requirements for the app will be coming up soon. Um, so, uh, lecture might go a little bit long today, just because, uh, like you said, these topics are a little bit involved, but I think we cut it down enough that it might not be the case. But just in case, uh, please bear with us. So, bonus lecture topics. So, bonus lectures are coming soon. Uh, I think bonus lecture, since the app challenge kicks off, takes off one of them. So, what would you guys be interested in? Um, I know I, we saw like one comment saying uh, like interest in Android game uh, development. Um, are there any topics in like Android development you'd want to learn more about that we don't cover uh, based off of like what you see on the syllabus? Um, anything you guys want to learn? And you know, anything is fair game. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, no, we're tired of learning. <laughs> you can like uh, make an ideas form, like a uh, bonus lecture form later on, and we'll like put it on the textbook so you can submit ideas for a bonus lecture. Yeah, so okay, we'll, we'll do that. We'll put out a form, and if you guys think of something that you'd be interested in learning, you don't have to come up with it now. You can submit it, and um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, hopefully, if we find like common threads, like many people are interested in X, then we'll try to get that. Um, so, uh, also, we found that a lot of people were interested in um, seeing the location example again uh, from homework three. So, we're going to be doing a uh, another demo of that um, after lecture, uh, just uh, for knowledge sake, um, to know you know how, how you actually use location in an application. Um, and spooky extra credit. So, uh, this week in I guess celebration of Halloween. Uh, we're going to have one point of extra credit if you change the network request to be something Halloween related. So it's pretty simple, hopefully, but um, it's, it's a point of extra credit. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, 
uh, we're going to start talking a little bit about the feedback now. So how engaging was lecture? Um, these are the votes that we've gotten. Uh, pretty good. Uh, it seems like it's generally on the more positive side, so I'm happy to see that. Uh, we'll try to keep lecture as engaging as possible and um, uh, hopefully not make it too quick, which brings us to the next slide. Um, what was the pace? So leaning a little bit on the fast side. So this is a little bit the nature of the course. We only have six lectures and you know, we want to teach you guys a lot, but at the same time we have to sort of strike it down where um, we can't go too, too fast, otherwise no one will learn anything. So uh, we will lean a little bit on the fast side, but at the same time uh, we're sort of going to double down on that by trying to provide as much help as we possibly can for any time that something may move a little bit too fast. Um, how engaging were the demos? Generally pretty positive uh, votes as well. Happy to see that. Um, and as for the pace of the demos, we have a little bit on the fast side as well. So uh, once again, especially with demos, uh, we record these, uh, the demos specifically on purpose so that you can revisit them. We don't expect you to be able to search and analyze it the first time through. Maybe from like the bigger picture, it makes sense, but uh, it's supposed to be a reference that you can come back to and you can see again. So that way, like when it comes time, you know, you're going to actually apply this in your homework, you can take a look at the uh, demo. But that being said, we will try to internalize this information. We will try to make the lecture a little bit on the slower side and the demo a little bit on the slower side. Um, and how many hours do you typically spend on the homework? So we're seeing anywhere from five hours up to like, I think the max was nine hours. Um, and I think um, only, so three and four hours was only 25%. So 75% of people are spending five or more hours on the homework. Um, this is actually uh, roughly on target for what a two credit class workload should be. Um, but uh, that being said, um, there's a lot of variance here. So if there's ever any trouble with the homework, I know a lot of the times it's sort of just like one bug is the thing that stops you from like, moving forward. And if you fix the one bug, you could have like dropped an hour off the amount of time. So, uh, you know, uh, come to office hours. Uh, make campus wire posts um, or schedule in office hours at none of the times uh, we'll see. Um, and how interesting were the assignments? So uh, moderately, uh, so like indifferent towards slightly interesting. Uh, this is this is good. There were no uninteresting votes, <laughs> um, so I'm happy to see that. Uh, and uh, how difficult were the assignments? Um, also on the difficult side. Um, yeah, so I, I guess uh, this is sort of part of the, because uh, it, it, Android development, right, mobile development, software engineering for mobile platforms is very different from really anything else that you do, like here at Cornell, um, with like computer science. So naturally it's going to be sort of like feeling a little bit like being thrown into the deep end, but um, we're going to like really try to make sure that um, we make it as consumable as possible, like for the next week. Um, this week's homework, we've given you all starter codes that hopefully take some of the ease off. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep this in mind. We're, we're, we're shooting for like a three or a four. The, the two fives, hopefully we can bring them back in. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, and just overall, this question, do you have any questions about what you learned, something you'd like to learn? So going through the responses, some key points we saw um, was potentially homework three solutions. Um, so we might uh, release them. We have to generate them, so it might be uh, just some time because we're going to prioritize, you know, grade what you have submitted before we put out um, solutions. Um, people wanted to know about good code practices. Uh, they, you know, noticed that the uh, code that we've released for homework two solutions uh, had a little bit of like different um, syntax and like use of functions and stuff like that. So this is. Uh, a lot of it actually comes from not just Android, but like, um, you know, programming in a certain kind of way. Um, and this, uh, actually, a lot of it came from uh, functional programming, which you'll learn a lot about in CS 3110 eventually. But um, also this idea of separation of concerns, uh, you know, these are sort of just topics in um, uh, Android uh, or in uh, programming in general, which we've seen uh, applied even here in Android development. Um, and additional topics in Android development. Um, so any additional topics you'd like to learn, um, 
please submit it in our bonus lecture form, which we'll be putting out uh, very soon. Okay. Um, any questions about feedback? So I hope this was uh, useful for you all to sort of, you know, get an idea of how everyone else is feeling about the class, sort of be transparent with you all. Um, yeah, and tell us and let you guys know about how we're going to um, try to make strides in positive direction. So, any questions? All right. So, uh, let's review lecture four before we dive into the material today. So, remember, we learned about a recycler view, and we said our recycler view is basically the industry standard way of making list based apps. So, anytime I have some data like Twitter, where my data represents tweets, which could be images, strictly text, links, things like that. I'm uh, treating this as data to represent one cell. And so to actually implement the recycler view, we need, of course, the data to display, the recycler view object itself, the one cell layout XML. Remember, you created a XML file for a single cell because a single cell can look different. Right? In the case of theater, we could have a single cell being the image and then the title and then the batches for like BRBs and stuff like that. Um, the layout manager, the data adapter, which uh, binds cells on data change, and the view holder container, um, which holds information about how to display the item. And remember, we talked about one of the reasons why the recycler view is industry standard, why it's so efficient, is because it utilizes the view holder pattern which is basically a way of avoiding duplicate calls of find view by ID, um, which we found out was a very costly function call in Android development. And for that reason, we prefer recycler views over list views, which is sort of like a simple way to make uh, very dumb list apps. Uh, so any questions about what we went over in lecture four? All right. Okay, so we're going to dive now into fragments and networking. So we sort of teased this idea of fragments a little bit up to this point. We've uh, mentioned it a little bit throughout some diagrams and things like that. So what is a fragment? It's basically an Android component that allows you to reuse UI elements across screens. So this idea hones at modularity. So if I have an app and I don't want to continuously recreate and destroy activities over and over, I can use fragments to host sort of different sections of screens within one activity. So the common example, which we'll see, is a tab layout. Every time I have a tab layout and I'm selecting a new tab at the bottom, what I'm doing is I'm not actually creating the new activity. Each tab does not bring you to a new activity, but rather it's all within one activity, and we're simply just changing out the fragments. So a fragment is hosted within an activity. So we'll see examples of this in a second. So this is the example using a tab layout with eatery. So before when we told you that we had, you know, like the campus uh, activity, or the, like the eatery's activity and like the login activity, uh, we lied to you. There is only one activity. Actually, there might be two. But there, there, there is basically only one activity in the eatery. And just different fragments. So each one of these tabs brings in a new fragment. So look at all of these screens. What, what is the constant that you see across all of these screens? Someone tell me. Yeah. Right, that tab layout, right? And one other thing is that little bar at the top, that blue bar. So this is what the text is changing, what the blue bar itself is filling. So this is what the activity is. And the fragment is loading in different things depending on which tab we're currently in. So on this on this first one, the main list fragment, we're showing the main list of theory. Then we have the weekly menu fragment and the login fragment. So basically every time I'm clicking one of these, I'm putting in a new fragment. So it's all within one activity, just different fragments. This idea sort of makes sense. So, uh, why would we want to use a fragment over using like uh, multiple activities, for example? So, it 
basically it's a similar concept to what we thought about with recycler views. So why was the recycler view so efficient? Who can tell me why the recycler view is so good? Right, it's like this. It's, it's it's doing this view holder pattern to reuse those cells, right? So it's not constantly creating new things and finding them by ID. It's actually a finite set of cells, and it's just repopulating those cells, right? That view holder container is just being repopulated. So it's sort of a similar idea where we're going to be reusing uh, some UI components by basically having a container and loading a fragment in, pulling a fragment out, loading a fragment in, pulling a fragment out. Rather than creating a new activity, destroying the activity, creating a new activity, destroying the activity, we know activities can be a little bit complicated with like the destruction and everything, right? We saw the end of the life cycle, right? The on on resume, all of that stuff. Um, and so you can add more modularity to the app architecture. So maybe like a tweak is always 300 pixels tall. So I could load in a new fragment into a 300 pixel tall container. And so now I have this sort of modularity aspect to my application where I can dynamically change what goes inside of that tweet container. Um, and I can also reduce redundancy in the code base. So rather than having to recode like a tweet in like five different ways, I can just have the fragment loaded in, loaded out, loaded in, loaded out, depending on what kind of content I'm dealing with. Okay. Um, so fragments. Uh, also have life cycles, um, similar to the life cycles of activities. Um, but something to note is that uh, activity life cycles can impact the life cycle of a fragment, but a fragment's life cycle cannot impact um, an activity's life cycle. So basically, if I'm destroying a fragment, should I also be destroying the host activity? No. But if I'm destroying the host activity, should I also be destroying the fragment? So it's this idea of one affects the other. Um, so the fragments life cycles are tied to the host activity. Um, and uh, the general things that we'll see with fragment life cycles is on create um, and the on create view and then the on pause. So uh, typically when you, the way that you think about fragments being paused is you can have something um, in uh, newer practices with Android development of putting it on a back. So after I take a fragment off, I'm throwing it onto a back tab. So basically, if I'm going between three different tabs on my app, one of the fragments, you don't want to keep destroying it, recreating it, destroying it, recreating it. So you can just throw it on a back tab. Okay? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, uh, what's this? Thing? So, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to go too much into this code. I forgot that we included networking, so we're definitely not going to do that. Um, okay, so integrating fragments into an activity. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. So how do we add recycler views um, to an activity? Um, we One of the ways that we've seen is, or one of the aspects of adding it was creating an XML for the recycler view, right? We sort of, um, in the XML file, had a uh, open tag, like Android X, uh, whatever, recycler view. And so we could do that with a fragment, but we don't want to do that with a fragment. Because this is considered very bad practice, and it's sort of like seen as like hard coding a fragment. But the best way to do it is to programmatically add and use a container that you can load the fragment into. So let's say I create like just like a linear layout. I can load my fragment into it programmatically, and then I could change the fragment yes, uh, in that uh, container uh, time by time. So this thing that I was talking about where we get this advantage with fragments where we can load stuff into it, this is only true if we do it the smart way. If we do it the dumb way where we create like a fragment directly into the XML, we sort of lose some of the best parts about uh, fragments and efficiency and this modularity. So this is just us telling you, if you add it, do it programmatically, not in the XML. Okay. So when we're adding uh, fragments into an activity, um, we're going to be using uh, a fragment manager and fragment transactions. 
So we're going to see uh, a little bit more about like how this actually works in the code. But from a high level, um, let's just understand uh, that what a fragment manager is, is basically it's just managing the fragments in one activity. So in the case of like Eatery, we have three fragments for that one activity. So how are we managing putting one in, putting one out, putting one in, putting one out? So what 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 you can do is you can commit changes to some container with a fragment manager, um, and we'll see like what the syntax code actually looks like. Um, and fragment transactions are the actions that you can do, basically. Um, so, like, if I'm going to launch something, and one of the things, like, caching is implemented uh, one way through the back stack. So, if I want to put one of the fragments on the back stack, that's a, a fragment transaction, I can do it. Okay. So, uh, before, we, um, before we keep moving, any questions so far? about what a fragment is, how a fragment works, maybe what a back stack is, any of this. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're talking about the layout. Yeah, so a uh, layout is done uh, XML. So um, here we have uh, basically uh, an example of integrated fragments into an activity. So we've created a fragment manager, um, and we've gotten the support for the fragment manager, which is basically just, uh, you can think of it as a suite of things that allows you to do stuff. Um, and so the fragment manager is going to first begin the transaction, do something, and then commit what you just done. So in this case, what's the do something? We're going to add. So we're going to begin the transaction, then we're going to add, and then we're going to commit. In the second example below, we're going to begin transaction, we're going to do something, replace, and we're going to commit. This is sort of the pattern we're going to see. So the adding is basically going to be adding some UI elements to some fragments, and then we're going to commit those changes. So, uh, and then this one, we're going to replace some UI elements. Um, and then commit those changes. So this is sort of how you can think about um, first putting something onto a container and then uh, replacing that thing with something else. Okay. And so this is all done with the admin manager using our three-step process. Begin transaction, do the thing, commit it. All right. So now we're going to take a quick detour into navigation, which is a sort of uh, coupled topic with Fragments. So here we see another example of a uh, tab layout, or in this case, uh, the bottom navigation bar, and we see this in the Starbucks app. So the Starbucks app is doing exactly what you think it is. It's simply just using fragments rather than recreating activities over and over. Um, and it also uh, makes use of a tab layout. So a tab layout is another type of layout where you can also use uh, fragments. So, right, so when I click on menu, I can just load in the menu fragment. When I click on feature, I can load the feature fragment. And these can all have different things associated with them. Okay. Um, and uh, one other uh, thing we're going to learn about is um, there's a navigation uh, called a view pager. So one of the ways you can navigate is through a view pager, which is uh, basically you're just swiping through fragments. Um, so a view page allows you to swipe through fragments, whereas um, with a tab layout, you click the tab and then it loads the fragment. Okay. Um, so uh, to share data between fragments, um, it's a little bit uh, more complicated than sharing between activities. So when we were sharing between activities, right, HSV, RGB, RGB, HSV, we created intents and we sent them over. So it's a little bit more complicated with fragments because fragments are tied to post activity. So you can't directly send from a fragment to another. The fragment has to send to its post activity, and then the host activity can then send to fragment B. So basically, this intermediate step of sending to the activity, and we do this with something called the, uh, the callback pattern, which refers to the way that we implement this thing. And we'll see um, in the demo. Uh, or actually, maybe next. <laughs> uh, 
we'll, 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 it's, it's on the textbook if you need it, but it, it's a little bit in the deeper concept of fragments. So I suppose um, unless you're actually going to create like a multi-fragment app, then you don't need it. But the code is on the textbook if you're interested. Yeah. So other solutions to this problem could also be persistent storage, which we'll learn about next week. Um, so like storing it into like a singleton class for data. Um, so if it's being stored as sort of like data in the app, then um, it could be accessed from uh, both locations because it's actually being stored uh, physically. And there is also a solution by Google called um, Live Data, if that's something you're interested in um, learning more about. What? Yeah, so we're going to move now into the soft intro to networking. Any questions about fragments? So what you need to know about the homework is you're going to be um, basically having uh, a, so this, this week's homework is a wallpaper app. And you're going to be using a view pager to swipe between um, a wallpaper fragment. So view pager is one of the types of navigation where you can swipe between different fragments. And uh, we'll learn more about how you can use a view pager in the demo today. But any questions about fragments? Yeah, the content is Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, typically, the way that it's done is they'll have a container right off top, and they populate into it dynamically what they need to, depending on what's in the collection. Okay. Um, any other questions on fragments? So with networking, um, so uh, I think uh, all of you have some notion of what networking is, right? It's um, using uh, sort of information we get from the internet. Um, it's uh, how we can pull data in real time from the cloud. So uh, the purpose of networking is to retrieve data from the internet, to store data on the cloud, or share data um, and interact with other users. So this is really a pivotal part of an Android application. Think about your phone. Think about the apps that you have. What percent of them don't use the internet? You're you're going to be pretty hard pressed to think about a single app other than like the calculator app that doesn't use the internet. And that's because um, it's becoming such an important part of um, basically how we interact. You know how we do everything. It's more efficient to pull data from the internet rather than populate it locally. Things like this. So for that reason. Um, Networking has become a super pivotal, super, super pivotal, is it, uh, pivotal. What, what, what's wrong? <laughs> it's important. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, HTTP is a type of protocol that you use to make um, network requests. So um, uh, maybe you've seen HTTP as like a, like near browser HTTPS slash slash. So HTTP is like a little bit worse version of HTTPS. So um, requests you can make with HTTP are uh, get requests. So this is when I want information from the internet. So if I have something that I can, uh, you know, ping and get information from, right? Like some web server, I can uh, get information from. I can make a get request to it. And just to sort of think about this, that's exactly what your internet browser is. It's literally just making get requests. Every time you go to a new website, you're just making a get request to that website. It's, you're just pulling information from whatever the URL is. And the URL is the address from which you're making the get request. So internet browsers are really just get request machines. So uh, we can also have post requests where we want to actually send data uh, to the internet. Um, and so uh, we could also have a put request um, to replace um, whatever resource we're looking at with new data. So whatever was there before, we're going to replace it. Um, and then we can have a delete request to delete some uh, piece of data, some target. So, and there are other types of HTTP requests. HTTP request is its own bag of networking. If you're very interested in this sort of thing, um, maybe 
uh, you're taking the backend course. Um, but uh, this is, uh, from a high level, what HTTP is. What we're going to be interested in is making GET requests and potentially POST requests. Um, and this is important for when you start working with backend members and you have time. Okay, so how does an HTTP request look like? What's the structure of it? So there is the header and then the body. So the body is the HTML uh, you get when you go to a website, right? When I'm making a GET request to Google.com, I get back some HTML code that is Google. That's the, that would be the H, that would be the, the HTTP body that I get from the request. Um, but this is the example of making um, a request to something that will give me back, um, like Google, from the HTML code. So the header contains metadata about the request. So when did you make it? So the timestamp. Um, are you authorized to make this request? Um, things like that. Um, you're not uh, really supposed to know everything about it to uh, be able to do it. I mean, it's great if you do, but I'm saying we don't need to. Um, and the body is the content of the request. I could be making the request to just a web server. I could be making it to Google. I could be making it to anything that can give me back some data. So when I make uh, a GET request, it's not the end of the story when I get it. It's also going to uh, send back the requested info. But let's say, and this is right, this sort of makes sense. If I'm making a GET request, then hopefully I get the thing that I'm requesting, right? But what if I make a POST request? If I want to post some data, should I receive anything back? What do you think? So I want to, so I've just figured out that something happened. And so I say, all right, add this new piece of data that says, um, like, Adam is value 20. And so I post Adam 20 to the web server. Should I receive anything back after I post it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The verification that it actually did go through. Because otherwise, right, I'm sort of just sitting in the dark. Did it work? You know? And dealing with the internet, the internet is like garbage. The way that the internet was designed is one of the absolute worst designs ever because it could have been efficient, but they decided to make it inefficient for like money reasons and like uh, BGP or a gateway protocol. But uh, basically, uh, you want verification. Verification is important. Drop packet happens a lot with networking. So if you make a post request, you should expect a response back. So, okay, let's take a look now. Um, so, some popular networking libraries um, are OKHTTP OK and some other ones. Um, we're only going to use OKHTTP. OK um, it's developed by Square. Um, so, uh, some permissions that you might need is, uh, th these are typically legacy permissions. I don't think you need to make these requests um, since like API 24 or something anymore, since every app uses the internet, like I said. But, um, in case you ever run into uh, any issues uh, with internet usage, um, I guess give this a shot. Um, and so these are the status codes that I can get in response. So uh, basically, uh, I have uh, three digits in my status code. And so if it starts with a one, that means I get an informational response. If it starts with a two, it's a successful response. Three is a redirect, four is a client error, and five is a server error. Um, and uh, of all of these, error 404 should be popular, right? This is something that we've heard, right? This is a client error. That means um, it's not on the server, but rather it's on you, the client, who's making the request. So, uh, uh, so this is another way of thinking about it. So one is like, okay, hold on. This is my informational response, right? I'm saying, hold up one second. And then two is successful response. Here you go. This is the stuff that you asked for. Three is the redirect, right? So, sorry, this is the one you <laughs> uh, Four is you screwed up, and five is I screwed up, where the I is the server and the U is the client. So, this, uh, this is uh, not, like I said, this is good for debugging. Hopefully, you don't have to run into this too much. Um, but yeah, so any questions about networking? So the most important thing that we 
uh, sort of walk away with today is what is a get request? What is a post request? And um, what should I expect back from either of those? And we're going to go more into um, actually developing a lot of things with Android development and networking next week. So any questions? All right. So we're done on time. All right, so we are going to make an app with some fragments of the pager and a tab layout, okay? which is all stuff that you're going to be doing on your homework. So, anyway, so first we start with this main activity. Uh, as you have typically seen, we have uh, a main activity and it has some corresponding XML. So let's go take a look at it right now. And after this loads, uh, you will see that we have in our main activity. So uh, in order to include a tab layout and view pager in your activity, you have to basically include the XML for them in your activity. And you can do that basically the same way as you do regular views. Just, uh, yeah, basically, Type in something like tab layout, it'll auto complete for you, and then add the appropriate constraints. So, this is all pretty similar to what you've done before. It's the same thing as with regular views, just with different components. Any questions so far? Okay, and now to set this up in the actual code, there's some setup that's involved. Um, so first, we have to uh, find get use find view by ID to get those appropriate views, and um, like with uh, recycler views, we have to set up a sort of adapter for the view pager. And now recall the view pager is that thing where you can like swipe left and right in order to navigate to different fragments. And so in order to do that, the view pager has to like keep track of like the fragment that should be returned at like each position of the swipe. So it has to know, for example, okay, I'm at the, the uh, position zero, I should return fragment one, for example. So it has to do that kind of thing. And in order to do that, it needs an adapter that we are going to create right now. So first is an adapter and it's going to be a class. And we can just create it right here in this activity. So it's going to be a private inner class. And this is just basically means it's like you can nest classes inside other classes. And I'm just going to call this a view page adapter. And this is going to actually take in the activity as an argument. And it's going to extend something called a fragment state adapter. And uh, it's going to basically call uh, the fragment state adapters constructor. Uh, remember that this syntax is equal, it's equivalent to basically a super call, a call to the super constructor in Java. So this is Kotlin's version of a call to the super constructor. And now we have the basic skeleton and it's complaining because we haven't implemented everything it wants us to. So we hover over the complaint. Implement members, select everything so that it generates the boilerplate code for us. Okay, so now we have two methods. Any questions so far? I, 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 I find that there is another view pager and you know, there is one view pager and another called view pager two. What's the difference between them? Ah, good question. Okay, so ViewPager 2 is basically the newer and better version of ViewPager. And because Google is not very good at naming things, they decided to name this ViewPager 2 because they are extremely creative. No offense to Google. OK. And uh, yeah, any other questions? OK. 
So get item count is um, similar to the corresponding uh, method. It basically returns the total number of like fragments in this view pager. In this case, I have like a hard coded number and it's going to be uh, a number of fragments. And this right up here is where I've like defined that variable. It's basically sort of similar to like a static variable in Java. So this is just like syntax stuff. Question. Oh, the colors for the highlighting, you mean? This is uh, Adam's color color. Uh, it's like a custom theme. You can download Android Studio themes. Yeah, I can find the name of this one specifically if you're interested. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, no, moving on. So now we want to actually create the appropriate fragment based on the position. So, for example, I might want a different uh, fragment return, like, uh, for the very first fragment in the list, but like have like more have different fragments when I like spike right, for example. And I already have um, uh, another fragment coded up. So if I wanted to, I could just return the same fragment uh, for all of them, and I could just like return home fragment dot new instance. And um, this is basically a uh, sort of like a factory method that returns a new instance. And so if I wanted to, I could return, you know, basically an instance of the same fragment for each position. However, I might want to have, you know, create a different fragment, and that is what I'm going to do now, just create a new fragment from scratch, just to show you how fragments are created. Any questions up to this point? Okay, cool. Okay, so we have new and we have this fragment. I'm going to create a blank fragment. I'm going to call it number fragment because I am going to put a number in this fragment. Okay, so this is the boilerplate code that's generated for you when a fragment is created. So this is all given to you. And the Gradle is doing its thing right now. So while it's Gradle syncing, um, I am going to go back to this and just do some more setup for the view pager and tab layout. <laughs> oh. And uh, so view pager and tab layout, um, there's a way to sort of connect them so that the tabs are updated as you swipe through the view pager. And this is actually pretty common in many apps that basically it's like you can like swipe left and right in order to like move between tabs. And in order to like have this sort of like thing set up, what you want to do is first, um, you want to connect the view pager uh, to its adapter. So you can say view pager dot adapter equals new view pager adapter, and you're going to pass it this, which is again referring to the main activity. And next, we're going to create something called a uh, tab layout mediator, which just connects the tab layout with the view pager, so they're kind of in sync with each other. So we can say tab layout mediator, and we're going to pass it uh, the tab layout and the view pager. And uh, what we want to tell it to do is basically now the tab layout mediator wants to know, okay, what should we do? Uh, with a given tab in a given position, right? So if I want to set the text of the tab to reflect its current position, I can say um, tab.text equals position.toString, and this would just like set the text of the tab to basically the corresponding position. So it would be the first uh, tab would be have like display at number zero, the second would display at number one, and so on. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Mm. 
Okay, then moving on to the number fragment. This is sort of the new instance uh, method that was used to create the home fragment. And um, so the new instance is basically used to pass arguments to the fragment, basically passing information from the activity to the fragment when it's first constructed. So I want to pass a number from the activity to this number fragment. So I'm going to give it a number of type int. Don't need the second parameter. And I can put the number in to the bundle. So this is just like me changing the types of everything and the names of everything to match what I want it to be. And I can say up here, I want to say I want to keep track of my number using a variable. Then need param2. And in here, I can do number equals it dot get int our param one. And this is basically the same thing that you guys did with intent. It's just like with different syntax, basically. And it's basically the activity letting the child fragment uh, know about some of its arguments. Any questions in regards to this? Yes, the home fragment file is somewhere else. I will show it later on unless you want to see it now. Do you want to see it now? Okay, cool. Sounds good. And um, yeah, right. So uh, onCreate is where basically the, the variables uh, are assigned with the arguments that were given to the fragment. But on create view is uh, where we do things that we would uh, like find view by ID, for instance, where we actually like populate the view with information that we want. So this currently just directly returns the inflated view. But uh, I can change that and I can say store this in a variable first and return it later. And now we see that this uh, in, is inflating this layout, something called fragment number. And this is basically the XML file corresponding to this fragment. So this is automatically generated when we create a new fragment. And we can see it in the layout folder. And at this point, we can sort of modify it like we do regular layout files. And I'm going to give this a text view. ID because I want to basically display the number that I get in this text view. So I can go to my number fragment. Go and say, okay, I'm going to get the text view. Same thing as usual. We have text uh, find view by ID. And um, because we're looking for uh, because we're looking for the text view uh, in this specific uh, view, I have to do view dot find view by ID instead of just calling find view by ID. And same as usual, we can do text view dot text equals like let's say. Number dot two string. And this exclamation mark is basically me telling the compiler that this is not null. Because I said it's null before, I'm saying, okay, it's safe, this is not null right now. This is basically me telling the compiler that. And yeah, that is that. So basically this fragment is ready to go. What it basically is doing right now is just a fragment that has a number in it that will display a number that was given to it as an argument. Any questions so far? All right. Um, let's go back to the main activity. 
just so we can finally see these fragments in action. So when I create a fragment, I don't only have to return a, a home fragment. I can instead say, you know, um, when the position is zero, I want to return the home fragment. And otherwise, I can return the number fragment, fragment and give it the position. And right. I am supposed to call you like this on this. And uh, for the when statement, it's basically like the Kotlin version of a switch statement. And yeah, you can use it with enums and stuff. Question? Oh, so when I created the number, the home fragment was already created. I just created the number fragment right now. Yeah. No, that's something you have to create. So the home fragment is just there because I don't have time to code it up. Uh, the purpose of the home fragment is to show you that you can like put multiple types of fragments into a single behavior. Yeah, and because I don't have time to code it up during demo. And yeah, so hopefully this should work. I forgot a dot attach. Hmm. Hopefully that should work. And so. The setup here is we have the view pager set up with a tab layout, set up with a tab layout mediator, the adapter, and the various fragments. And we return the proper fragment in the create fragment method. So that's the general setup right now. Let's run this. Uh, hopefully it actually works. I'll be very sad if it doesn't. Yeah, and also sorry for going over time. We had to cover a bit more than usual during lecture and demo today because we had to like sort of like squish multiple lectures together because of hack challenge meeting taking up one of our lectures. While this is Gradle building, I can show you home fragment. So home fragment is basically very similar to number fragment instead of, but instead of having just a text view in it, it's displaying an image view. And you can change that with uh, uh, basically in the XML corresponding to the home fragment. And so in this on create view, this is going to be very similar to what you're going to do in your homework. Um, so home fragment contains a, an image view. And what this image view is being populated with, it's being populated with an image from Pixabay, which we are obtaining through a network request. And you guys don't have to worry about actually making the network request because we're gonna give you starter code to do that. But um, we are going to ask you to basically make the network request itself, like basically call our helper method that makes the network request. So we're going to ask you to call our helper method, which is get picture, and basically pass in the picture number you want. So we're going to ask you to display like six different pictures. So that's pictures number zero through five. Um, give our helper method the picture number you want and pass it the activity. In a fragment, you can't just like pass this in as an activity because this is a fragment and not an activity. So you use require activity to get the activity. And then you call, uh, you use an image loading library called Glide to actually load in the image from the URL into your image view. And I will go into this in further detail after I go show this. So it's sort of, like, sort of like lagging, but after it's like you scroll over, you can see that there's a number one here because it's being like displayed. 
Okay, it, it's going to show up eventually. You have to like push down from the very beginning. Yes, okay. It, it's kind of hard to simulate swipe like on the simulator, so it might be a little bit annoying. And instead of swiping using the view pager, I can also just click on the tab layout. And because the view pager and tab layout are connected, it's going to navigate to the correct fragment. So this is the number of fragments that with position two. Question. Yes, and also I believe there's also a requirement that you have to set the actual wallpaper of the phone uh, after clicking on the button. So yeah, I'm kind of going to deal with permission stuff. And um, yeah, I can further go over stuff on Glide if you have questions on it. But I think this is basically it for a demo. And yeah, if you have any questions about Glide or anything, feel free to stay, ask questions. We're also going to have a location demo later on after this. But yeah, you are free to go for today. Um, there is no fragment three when I keep swiping because I told the view pager adapter that there was only three fragments in here. So yeah, this is why it's capping itself at only three fragments. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, you know what? We can try. Yeah, we can try. Uh, it's. Yeah, I, I, it's on my computer, so. Uh, yeah, we will try our best. If we cannot like actually put it in this recording, we'll just like make a separate recording and like attach it to the end. Also, we might just put out only three solutions eventually also. Yeah, we might also just do that. So you will be able to see that question. I feel like it's more than a week. Yeah, it's definitely more than a week because it starts before Thanksgiving and it concludes sometime, I believe, after Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think it's like roughly two weeks ish. Yeah, that's, that's more than two weeks, I think. Yeah. Uh, so there are some people who are taking like intro to DPD, which is like the design class. Um, and so, uh, but they're not required to participate in that challenge. So they only do it if they want to, but the backend iOS and Android courses all require like participation in that challenge. So only like, you'll only find designers who are like, interested in doing it, who are also taking Uh, say that one more time. Uh, you can pick, um, and then the ideas you come you can come up with uh, like yourself. There's an ideation process like after the kickoff, and um, people submit ideas. And so if someone submitted an idea that you're interested in, you create it it's like how it was in previous semesters, and you can like be like, yo, I think your idea is cool. Do you need an answer? You can, you know, do, and I think we're gonna have like a, like a inter, like class, like not social, but like yeah, our, the kickoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I guess that is. Yeah, the kickoff is where you guys will like be able to like talk with other people about like their ideas and like get a sense of who you might want to work with from other classes, because basically the kickoff will have people from all the different classes here and gig, which. Now I'm thinking about it might not fit everyone. Definitely not. Okay, it's gonna be somewhere hopefully here. And we will try to have everyone here so you can talk with whoever you want to talk with, uh, get a sense of like what cool ideas, what cool projects you want to work on, maybe come up with your own cool projects and recruit others to your cause. So it's gonna be a, a fun time. 
definitely comes at the same cost. And their prizes. Uh, I mean, we'll like try to find you a team. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure everyone has a partner. Uh, so <laughs> you, you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> also, uh, ideally, hopefully, um, because I'm pretty sure this semester now everyone is going to be in groups of two to three of the same front end platform. So two to three iOS developers and two to three Android developers. So hopefully, um, through like the partners that you had and the assignments, you have some idea of maybe who you want to work with. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a location demo coming up for anyone who's interested. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, feel free to go because lecture is technically way past over. So. Um,